I'm back. <laughs> hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. I want to continue reviewing the Terminator film franchise since I just previously reviewed the Terminator along with Terminator 2 Judgment Day last week. Even though I had to take a little break for Veterans Day weekend and I had to review Snoopy in Space, come to mind. <laughs> okay. But this time I'm going to be reviewing the third installment of the franchise, Terminator Free, Rise of the Machines, with Schwarzenegger back again as the Terminator who has been sent back from the future to protect John Connor and Kate Brewster because Skynet suddenly brought in a new Terminator, this time it's a female named the Terminatrix which is an ordinary, which this time it's another advanced Terminator that can also form from liquid metal but underneath it at all it's a cyborg that can do anything you know a cyborg that can actually control the rise of the machines which they thought that they prevented from Judgment Day but it turns out to be an edible so now they know that yes this is the beginning of a nuclear war that we didn't think it would happen but it did okay yeah this is the two this uh, widescreen edition on DVD that I picked up a long time ago um, I actually bought this at Ross for a lot cheaper but it was a good deal at the time um, I did actually have to change the case because unfortunately it was broken, it, it damaged the top, so so then I had to replace it with something brand new and it actually holds two discs together. So as you can see, <laughs> right here I have the, um, yeah this is the uh, booklet that has the scene selections on the back, same cover art. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm trying to hold it very well. Yeah, you can see the indoor skeleton. And uh, what do you have here? <laughs> yeah. Just um, all the information that's included on the two disc sets and shows all the photographs. Also, it has this. I've got a booklet here. <laughs> Schwarzenegger. Yeah, it has all this other, um, all this other merchandise and stuff. There's even a DVD for Pumping Iron that was released by HBO. There's a Blu-ray for that too. All this other merchandise is for like glasses, uh, lunch pails, toys, and all that. Um, sorry. Uh, there's a video game here for the Xbox and PlayStation 2. Uh, and then there's the, uh, you're going to love this, Babin and Robin. <laughs> but with collateral damage and eraser, the last two films uh, I got as a double feature. Well, I know, it makes sense because Schwarzenegger was in Batman and Robin. So. And Warner Brothers released those films, so it's just part of that collection. And this is, of course, the, uh, this is the first disc. You can see the indoor skeleton. Yeah, in white screen. And the second disc that has the special features. Okay, so I'm just going over the place with this case. As you can see on the back, right here, where you see uh, the Terminator holding a, a coffin and just using the machine gun to shot down all the police officers and, and of course, the Terminatrix. Okay, got some nice features included here for this release. It's also on Blu-ray. Maybe someday I might 
take a chance to double dip it, but whatever. Okay, I'm just going to put the DVD right here. Uh, now back to the film. It's one of those what-if sequels. I mean, yeah, I won't hold a candle to the first two films. Granted, because they are the best, no doubt about it. And I can understand why, you know, there are people who don't like the film as much, or some people would like it, and apparently I'm one of those some people. But it's one of those what-if sequels about what would happen if Judgment Day that they try to prevent from happening turns out to be, well, inedible. So it's like, what they thought it was going to be true didn't really happen. So they had to go for another plan that they went for. So that's what Skynet did. You know, they hired a new Terminator. That's a female. And this one is actually more advanced than ever before because it actually not only forms with liquid metal, but it can also, underneath of it all, is a cyborg that actually have a lot of tools that can control. She can actually hack into the network straight from all the machines and and all this technology especially she can even control by coming up with her own tools to to hack into um, you gotta love this taking out the the police cars the ambulance to actually have them run by themselves to chase after John Connor you know during that chase scene and then she drives a a crane truck well the Terminator comes around just to, you know try to save both of them protecting them and drives by try to stop her yeah. and what's really also interesting was that um, this is the first time we ever get a female cyborg in this film because I know with all these Terminator ripoffs that we had like for example Eve of Destruction a terrible film, the one with Gregory Hines, in case everyone remembers. You know, they, they managed to get a female Terminator that actually turns out to be a feminazi. You know, she hates men, she goes around killing them, and he also kidnaps uh, kids around, and, and deep down of a ball, she have a, a bomb that could detonate from her skull that would actually create the end of the world. I'm like, wow. What a great idea for a movie like that. And it was released by the same studio that gave us the Terminator. Go figure. Orion Pictures. And not only that, but it was it was released like a few months before Terminator 2 Judgment Day came out. Same year, or I believe. So to me, if I had to go for the case, I'll take this movie over that one any day. Okay. Anyway, so Schwarzenegger came back, of course, and this time we got John Connor being played by Nick Stahl. Joins in with uh, Kate Brewster, played by Claire Danes. And Christiana Loken uh, plays the Terminatrix, also known as Terminator TX. And it's hard to believe because she was best known for for being in the TV series uh, Mortal Kombat. Yes, th there was a TV series for that in the late 90s. Um, and and yeah, this was long before she went on to do that Uwe Boll film, Blood Rain. Yeah, terrible. And I know this was... Um, it's been a long development uh, after the success of Terminator 2 Judgment Day because uh, throughout the years they were planning on doing a third installment but they weren't so sure how this was going to turn out because they had to come up with a, a better script had to be written or they had to try to see how this would turn out I mean that was up to Schwarzenegger plus with James Cameron being on hold for for the rights of the first two films because he directed them and he also wrote it, along with Gail and Heard being the producer, was that uh, you know 
Paracoil was already making some success with other films to follow, but then they were going for bankruptcy problems after the failures of other films. And, and then, of course, especially with the, the trouble production of Cutthroat Island, that led to the bankruptcy that happened. And to make matters worse, I mean, they had to get other companies like Fox to uh, take over if, since TriStar was already you know, decided to leave distribution for Caracol Pictures and have MGM take over to to release them. But that wasn't working out. And then Fox was hoping that they would buy out the company you know, to save themselves from bankruptcy. And I know Mario Kassar and Andrew Bynum owns the company for them. But that fell through and so they were hoping that they were going to come up with a new company called C2 Pictures, which is basically another Caraco to actually join in with uh, Intermedia and IMF. Intermedia, of course, was uh, just purchased the Largo Entertainment Library, but had produced several films, you know, like Cape Pax or Dark Blue, for that matter. And then you had Columbia Pictures um, owning the international rights, you know, for Sony, because I know TriStar, as part of Sony, would would have the rights to it. And Warner Brothers would actually own the North American rights, or the United States, for that matter. Seeing that um, Schwarzenegger had work uh, with all the films for Warner Brothers, you know, like Eraser. Collateral damage and, and yeah, Batman and Robin, as I mentioned. So, this time um, James Cameron did not direct this film. It was taken over by Jonathan Mastow. For those who don't know, he directed it, the movie uh, Breakdown with Kurt Russell and Kathleen Quinlan, uh, which a very good action film. You know, which is very underrated. By today, so I, they were going to get other directors to take over, but they figured Mostel would would take the challenge. So that's how it happened. I mean, and they're trying to find out what script that they were going to choose to write it. Like they were going to get, they got the John Brancato, Michael Ferris, and. And Teddy Safarian to Safarian to to put together this one script, of hoping that this would will try to see how this will turn out for the film itself, and hoping this will might be an entertaining blockbuster hit. And apparently, it did. It actually did so well um, for its, even for the. Even for the uh, Fourth of July weekend, I mean, even for its budget of one hundred eighty-seven point three million dollars, it went ahead and and actually made even more profit. Uh, actually earned four hundred four, yeah, four hundred thirty-three point four million, even worldwide too. So it was a big hit. And they join in once again with uh, All OM, Industrial Light and Magic, and even um, Stan Winston providing the special makeup effects. So the special effects still remains just like how it was in the 1991 film. So it kind of improves it even for the 2000s. Something I didn't think I would see. And even with all the rewrites that they have to have for the script, well, they're just hoping that this this will be the biggest of the summer. Maybe they'll be able to continue for the next series to come. Yeah. So, yeah, it was very expensive. Um, it's, it even doubles its budget from the previous one. So. Okay, uh, okay, enough with the chatter. Let, let's get to the film. It stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Nick Stahl. For those who don't know, he was in the film Tall Tale, which is a Disney film that stars uh, Patrick Swayze, Kevin O'Hara, Scott Glenn, 
and all the rest. Uh, Chrysanna Logan, yeah, once again from Mortal Kombat, the TV series. Claire Danes, uh, she was from the TV series My So Called Life, but she went on to do films like To Julian on her 37th birthday, uh, William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio, directed by Boss Luchman. And I know she later went on to do films like Temple Grandin from HBO and Me and Orson Welles, among others. She's a great actress. David Andrews, uh, Mark uh, Famaletti, Earl Boyne, yes, Earl Boyne, he returns. Hard to believe, but he did. But sad to say, this was his final film role. He actually uh, retired. But Jay um, Agavane and Bill D. Lucas. It's uh, written by John Bancato, Michael Ferris. Join in with Teddy Sarafarian. And it's directed by John Mastow. The movie began set 10 years ago after the event of Judgment Day. John Connor, now in his 20s, played by Nick Stahl, has been living off the grid in Los Angeles, California, you know, working as a construction worker by day, but then hangs around all the way throughout the city, such as hanging around at a bridge and drinking some beer, but wanders around uh, with his motorcycle at night, almost ran over a deer, but caused an accident. And it follows the death of his mother, Sarah Connor, who was played by Linda Hamilton, which has not been shown in the film because apparently Hamilton did not appear. Um, she was going to be, but she had to move on doing some other films in her career. So that's why they've written her off. She died of leukemia. Well, the war between the humans and the machines run by Skynet did not begin in 1997 as they were told. John, however, still fears that it might happen someday. That's where Skynet sends a new Terminator model called the Terminatrix. Yeah, it's a female, also known as Terminator TX. It's played by Chrysanna Logan, who actually appeared at Beverly Hills at a clothing store, fully nude, you know, almost covering her boobs from her long hair, until she came over, she steals a Lexus car that a, a older woman has, but a woman that's um, you know, driving by, you know, a after discovering a woman coming by, and then she steals her car, her clothes, she actually kills her off screen. So then she just uh, takes out the cell phone, starts to uh, hack into it and just uh, appear with several of the targets of hers, most of which were, were high school students uh, that John Connor had attended to. Yeah, so at that rate, she goes around being pulled over by a local cop even though she actually discovered a, a billboard of Victoria's Secrets and that's where she grew her breast. And she just says, I like your gun. And kind of like how she said, I like your car. <laughs> so it also kills the cop as well off screen. So at this rate, um, they were also going to become the future um, human resistance as well. So that's probably why. So then the resistance had sent in the Terminator, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's not the T-800 as you may already know from the first two films. This time it's a T-101. So this is more of a different Terminator than what we expected. And he's, he's uh, joined in to protect John Connor and his future wife, K-9. 
Kate Brewster, played by Claire Danes, who works as a veterinarian. And of course, Terminator just uh, came directly, fully nude from a Mojave desert. Once up at a local bar, which it was ladies' night, so once he enters, yeah, you see all the ladies, you know, wooing and hooing. Then spotted a <laughs> a stripper. He tells uh, him to take off his clothes. He refuses, but he, then he says, "Hey, talk to the hand." <laughs> yeah, he crushes his hand, and then he just says, "Now." Yeah, just take off your clothes now. <laughs> okay. So he did. He took his clothes, uh, and then suddenly he roars these glasses. <laughs> Make him look almost like Elton John. <laughs> that was crazy. He crushes them, then steals a 4x4 truck that has a shotgun rifle and some nice pair of shades. Yeah, almost kind of like how he wore those shades in the first Terminator as well as the second. Yeah. I mean, more bad as than ever before. <laughs> so, anyway. So after killing several other targets here, the TX located uh, Kate inside the, the animal hospital, which she just killed um, a pet owner, um, which she owns a cat named um, Hercules because she was sick, so it was like an emergency, but then uh, which Kate would later uh, put John inside a kennel even though he was taking those uh, pills that's actually for neutered dogs he was actually threatening her with a paintball gun so then TX was going after her before the Terminator arrives um, just when he ran over the Terminator TX and then um, he put Kate inside her truck, which is the Toyota Tundra SRS, which then later the Terminator went straight inside um, the animal hospital to pick up John from the kennel, and that way they'll be able to go through the truck, so he starts to drive while it was a fight between the Terminator and the Terminator TX. Yeah, and that's where all these other rescue teams and cops came by to see, you know, checking the Terminator when when the TX actually uh, shoots him down, push actually run over him too. Well, with another with his uh, four by four truck and all that. And next we know um, the TX would actually uh, just when the cops arrive, you know, the, she would actually uh, take out the the cop cars by actually hacking into it, you know, using her finger that creates that special tool to to hack straight from all these wires and that way those two police cars as well as the ambulance will actually move by themselves so they can go chase after John and Kate inside from the veterinarian truck and that's where the big chase comes on when she steals a crane truck and the Terminator steals uh, a police motorcycle Yeah. I mean, John didn't really know that Kate was inside, but he figures, well, this was going to happen. Kate was sort of to scream for help just when John accidentally uh, crashed into that one guy's uh, car. A basically a tough guy was ready to beat him up, but then sooner or later he was about to drive and you know, pass him because, of course. The TX was right behind them, and then he has. He <laughs> then uh, she just continues to drive, 
as he crashes the guy's car and then and all, all the cops and everyone are arriving. Yes, a lot of police cars. And the ambulance were about to chase after them, crashing them, completely crushing them and stuff. So th this was like a huge chase car. So this was like a huge chase scene with the crane truck, you know, crushing every single building around, you know, scraping, scraping them all the way. The Terminator was riding on, on the motorcycle, trying to, to stop her. Then, you know, she was ready to crush him, too, when he was on top. And then, and then he got out of there. He steals the fire truck from the firefighters. He continues to drive, and then he's trying to go after her. Took her out, and he starts driving, sets up the crane all the way straight to the, the sewer top so he'll stop it the car starts flipping over here and there crashes all these other cars and then BAM explosions and all the TX of course was left behind and the Terminator took over the wheel where John was driving and then that's where they're about to head out to Mexico but first you know they had to get some gas for the local gas station, which is Arco, and Terminator went to A.M.P.M. <laughs> Mini Mart just to get all the supplies, but he's actually stealing them because he can't pay, and he just tells to the convenience store owner, "Talk to the hand." <laughs> of course, uh, Kate was about to get out of the trunk and started screaming for help, and that's where the owner started calling the police. So they're on their way. John and, and Kate were inside the truck. Uh, the Terminator just kept driving. And he had, um, he actually has like um, one of those uh, units uh, inside his body which can actually explode, and it did. Threw that off of the Mojave Desert and explodes. And once they went to, um, a funeral home because um, we learned about Sarah Connor of course that um, you may have thought that she was actually buried over there through the coffins but in reality she just left her guns over there from her friends you know like tons of weaponry and everything she was actually cremated Meanwhile, we begin to find out what happened to uh, Kate's um, fiancé named Scott Mason, played by Mark uh, Fumbaletti, which he was killed by the TX, and then suddenly he was in disguise, you know, transformed, trying to, to lure him by the two cops who just received a call from Kate Brewster from the, the store owner and then next thing you know the cops arrived, tracked them down to the funeral home the Terminator actually puts uh, Connor inside the coffin yeah, takes out the coffin and just starts sh shooting everyone <laughs> didn't kill them though but just shoots the car just like like how they did it in Terminator 2 but this one's like wow and that's that's when the cops um, took Kate and then that's where we meet as we speak Dr. Peter Silverman played by Earl Boyne in a very tiny role it was really nice to see him then he spotted the Terminator as you know he was holding the coffin and everything and the next thing you know um, well the cops had arrived even though still in disguise as Kate's fiance Scott, who just uh, grabbed straight into the cop, you know, while he was driving, and apparently he t <laughs> he took over the wheel, just driving while going straight through his his stomach, and then he also kills uh, the other cop. Well, he got out, and then next thing you know, 
transforms into the TX and was ready to kill Kate before John and Terminator had arrived. They grabbed her and then they took over, taking the, the coffin, putting it inside the hearse, chasing around the TX and was ready to crash uh, the roof so that way, you know, they would get past her and then, <laughs> and then they said, we need a new vehicle. So the TX was just, um, yeah, you also saw another truck coming by. So I think at this rate, she'll be able to steal it. But she was uh, test out um, one of her endo arms that he ha she has. I mean, this is where she creates all these tools. She gets to shoot um, a flame flower from the tree, and then it's the one where she can actually attack and shoot and create any tools for her arm. Amazing. So then they decided to go back from Mexico which we learned that uh, Kate's father, who's a U.S. Air Force General um, named Robert Brewster, played by David Andrews, who happens to be the primary creator of Skynet, which follows the death of Miles Dyson and the fall of Cyberdyne Systems, which at this rate it's the Cyber Research Systems, CRS, which is a military division that also develops automatic ultimate uh, weapons but it also has all these machines such as the TR-1 and TR-2 and even those drones and everything yeah. well we also learned that the TR-1 revealed that he did kill John Connor on July 4, 2032 which at this rate he did agree to take uh, by Kate's request to the CRS so they find a plan to actually prevent from this to happen so they went all the way but next thing you know the TX had arrived in the skies to, um, you know, just of like all these members and starts to hack in through a computer virus that, the, that she just sends out rising all these machines just when he was ready to uh, execute um, Skynet. But just, just when they arrived, I mean, she was transformed into um, Kate, but we know that wasn't Kate, that was the TX. And then Terminator, John, and Kate arrived until TX actually shot uh, her father, already wounded. The only way to stop them was, well, all the uh, the machines had had rises. You know, the TR1 and TR2 were attacking. Yeah, everyone has to escape around so they won't get killed. Yeah, half of them were. So now, um, so now Booster was ready to tell uh, Kate and John the location of where. John believes it happens to be the the Skynet system core. You know, where is it located? It was inside Crystal Peak. And they're trying to get um, all the directions to see what you had to sign in for. You know, through the codes of, of the colors that they had. Of course, already shot down and he died just as another drone passed by. So now they had to escape as soon as possible before they're being attacked by a drone, and and then, which at this rate, uh, <laughs> Kate actually took out uh, the machine gun and shot it down. Yeah, just when John would later say, "You remind me of my mother." <laughs> okay. Um, then there's like a fight battle between the Terminator and the TX, you know, crashing each other, you know, beating up and. Then she took out uh, her her uh, indoor arm and starts to shoot flame flowers on his face, and then cuts um, his neck, makes a part, and then she was ready to chase after them before John actually started out uh, a magnetic grid to actually stop all these machines. So that's where 
he actually caught uh, his shotgun and then <laughs> her herself and herself that's where you see all these liquid metal coming out of her and you can see the inside of it it's it's uh, the TX uh, female cyborg uh, creation here looks a lot different from the usual terminators that you saw you know, those endoskeletons but this one you can see what it looks like 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 it's trying to look more like a female skeleton type yeah so then already the Terminator had been corrupted just once he uh, got up he put his head back to the way it was in control so yes the TX actually corrupted his system like at this rate it almost seems like he was about to change like he either was trying to protect John and Kate just when they're about to arrive um, on the, her father's uh, plane just so they can get to uh, Crystal Peak but then Terminator was about to grab John and then Kate throwing them around till he had trouble trying to stop it so he had to shut himself down and then both John and Kate had just took the plane go all the way to Crystal Peak until the Terminator finally went back online and starts to go take the, the helicopter same goes with the TX they're chasing them just when they finally enter in case of the machines didn't arrive inside the uh, actual shelter when they went inside trying to put in the codes you know, through other colors uh, the TX arrived in the helicopter about to chase them and kill them before she was being crushed by the Terminator through another helicopter and then that's where it leads to the battle at the end just before the gate was about to be shut down and now both John and Kate have finally entered yeah, Terminator said we'll meet again yeah so he kills himself uh, along with uh, Terminator TX by using that part and put her inside her mouth and this is where he says you are terminated so they blast it so once uh, they arrive inside just when they thought that they were going to uh, disarm Skynet uh, by all these machines you know running well, it turns out that yes, they were actually in a fallout shelter with all the machines that are, that are set 30 years ago, all built. And yeah, you can see like a, a podium for the President of the United States, and you can see all the conference room and everything, so it was all empty. So it was definitely for a fault. So it's a shelter for, for nuclear wars, which apparently it was going to be used for military officials and, and governments. So they realized that there was no core, so the mission here was to, to survive. After, you know, they being self-aware. So at that rate, um, John suddenly calls because everyone um, just contact uh, the officials and so he was the only one along with Kate and Judgment Day suddenly begins as Skynet fires all these nuclear missiles across the world and that's where it becomes a nuclear holocaust so yep this was the beginning of what was going to happen yeah so at that rate Connor will definitely become the leader of the resistance as years fall. Yep. And what can I say about Terminator Free Rising Machines? In my opinion, I thought 
it was not a bad sequel at all. I mean, it was good. Had a strong message at times. Even with the silly moments that they throw into it, I thought, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Arnold Schwarzenegger was excellent as always as the Terminator, but it's a different Terminator, so he's not exactly what we expected. But he's more just uh, lean, mean, but hey, he was there to to actually protect, but unfortunately, you know, he can't uh, follow the orders of, of him anymore, and Fruit John, so of course, he was hoping that he was going to start over again, but that wouldn't happen, so that's always the case. Um, Christiana Logan, gotta admit, she was very hot and sexy, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty but deadly. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I thought she was excellent. She was the star for the film. I mean, I thought she was even more powerful than ever. Very advanced, so... She was very tough, too, to kill. So I know we had to deal with... So, of course, that's what you had to deal with. She, Part of her, she can actually transform into liquid metal and underneath it all with the cyborg inside of her and you can definitely see what she could do and she's more pr she can actually hack in or do anything so that's that was amazing Nick Stahl um, very underrated as John Connor thought he did a great job you know I know he's no Edward Furlong I mean I wish he had returned for the film but I understand he had to move on with other stuff so he couldn't do it. But hey, it's the best we could do. Uh, Claire Danes, I thought uh, she did an amazing job playing Kate Brewster. I mean, at times you can think that she would be a lot stronger later on after having this particular day of being kidnapped or so, or the way she's been treated, but. But then she begins to follow what was going on, on why the, the, the TX was chasing her as opposed to him. Yeah. Uh, I guess I can also mention that there's scenes in the movie, like for example, when the TX um, starts to discover the blood that might be either Kate's, but it wasn't. Then the next thing you know, she actually found. <laughs> A bandage from John. That's what she really did discover that was him through his blood. I thought, wow, that was kind of <laughs> pretty odd. Or any other. Uh, some nice special effects, once again, with uh, All OM teaming up with um, Stan Winston Studio, which he provided the special uh, prosthetic makeup effects and other effects that they use for the film so so it definitely looks as stunning and, and amazing than ever the action scenes were very impressive too I mean almost close to being as memorable as, as we can provide yes there's some blood and some scribs and stuff so it has some nice practical effects joining by with a mix of CGI. So it, it was well made for its time. I mean, seeing that this was done in the 2000s, and I can see why it's been a long time. Yeah, I know the script had to be rewritten by uh, one screenwriter, Teddy Serafian. Serfian, so they had two writers, John Bracanto and Michael Ferris, to fix it. This, I guess, the original script may have had some problems, but, and I, I understand there were flaws here and there. I have a bit of a nitpick where they say that Connor was 13 years old when, when the Terminator T800 reprogram joined in with the T-1000 was chasing him because he was only 10 years old uh, said in 1995 
this was supposed to be said later on, like, I think 2005? That's probably what I thought. So, or more than that, I guess. Anyway, and Mostel did a, a fine job directing the film, I mean, taking over for James Cameron, so I thought he did it the best he could, you know, creating all the shots. Uh, uh, the score was done by Marco Bartrami, took over for for Brad Fidel. Though the theme was there, but a bit of a remix, but it has a, a nice score to touch. Uh, with cinematography by Don Burgess. So beautiful shots. Um, it even has a nice soundtrack, which also includes the song by Gavin Brosdale from The Bush, the lead singer, called Going Down. I love that song. So it's, um, for, for what it's worth, it was an amazing sequel. I mean, again, not hold a candle to the first two, but I still think it's uh, worth it for the sake of it. I mean, it's a popcorn flick, so that's what you're hoping for. So anyway, that's Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, and I give it three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Talk to the hand.